the official proceedings. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is the CERN Experimental Physics Seminar, and Alan told me with great modesty that the last time the, sem the auditorium was so filled was the discovery of the Z boson. So you can take it or leave it, but that's what his opinion was. So um, we have the, um, the seminar today in the context of the workshop, of the neutrino workshop. Um, I will introduce the speaker, and then uh, before I do that, I want to say a little bit about the logistic. Probably you saw it on the web. So after the seminar, there is a roundtable discussion on uh, the uh, international, national, and uh, uh, the future of the neutrino physics program, a program that um, in the past uh, century has been a part of the high energy physics, um, astrophysics, neutrino astronomy, and cosmology, with one of the biggest uh, uh, discoveries in this field in the past 20 years being, in fact, the neutrino oscillations. We, we find it now because we give it to the graduate students to solve problems, we find it as a given, but in fact it is a significant, um, it is a very significant discovery on uh, the physics, um, um, on the physics beyond the standard model, I would say. So um, we are very glad uh, that Alain and the organizers of, um, of this uh, workshop here at CERN and at the University of Geneva um, have uh, given us a very distinguished uh, speaker for today's uh, seminar. Um, this is uh, Professor Goran Senjanovic. Okay, uh, I said the name correct, which is not an easy thing in, uh, in, um, uh, in, in the corresponding language. Um, so I would say a few words um, on, uh, on his career path. Uh, Dr. Sinjanovic uh, did his undergraduate degree in Belgrade. Uh, then he did his PhD, his, uh, uh, his uh, PhD and further education work uh, in the United States. He was at the City University of New York and then a postdoc at Maryland and a staff at Brookhaven. And he has been working in the past uh, 30, 40 years on uh, neutrino physics. He has been for the past 20 years uh, staff um, at the ICTP. And uh, some of his major work, all of you who attend this conference probably are already uh, very familiar. The seesaw mechanism in the 70s, the left-right asymmetries, the unification, the Suzy unification, uh, work that has been developed in the past 30 years by Dr. Sinjanovic. So he will talk to us today about the neutrino paradigm and the LHC. And um, we are a little bit late, so we are going to finish the seminar at 5.05, at which time um, um, uh, Dr. Ellis will uh, run the, 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 round, uh, the round table, okay? Um, so for the people in the round table, I have to say already that um, we have to have some discipline because we have only two uh, microphones, and so it's going to be a very civilized discussion <laughs> where you will share the microphones one by one. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much for this kind invitation, and I wish I had the discovery to announce or even to promise. Um, these days when we speak of new physics, we all say LHC. We can't help it. We've been waiting for 20 years or more. But admittedly, there are no hard predictions. We don't have the theory beyond the standard model that tells you that the phenomena have to be there in those energies. And most of the beyond the standard model physics was tied to the idea of naturalness. Now, what I'll try today is to use from logical, if you wish, or experimental motivation. And obviously, I'll also come up short. Otherwise, I would announce the discovery. It's still soft, but well, let me try. Uh, if I want to look for new physics, the place to look for the best is the neutrino mass, which is the only established physics beyond the standard model. And the message is very simple. You probably, most of you know it. If neutrino were to be a Majorana physics, there would be a great window, uh, no, a Majorana particle, there would be a great window to new physics. And I'll try to argue that it has a good chance, serious chance at LHC. That is, we verify. 
Now, this talk is not a review, so please don't feel bad if your talk is not, if your work is not being mentioned here. What I want to do here simply is to make a case for LAC to be a neutrino machine. If you walk out and you don't agree with this, I've failed. Okay. And in order to do this, I'm going to exemplify it. I'll make a, a case study of a theory that I'll try to argue is the theory. And I have to admit the logical possibility that you don't agree with me, and then afterwards, then I'll just go back to the basics and I'll discuss what is a generic, if you wish, scenario language, a way, the paradigm of understanding neutrino mass, CISO at the LAC. Now, I think arguably the modern particle physics starts with a bombshell of Dirac in 1931. It will take him three years to get courage, which was inevitable as an equation that the antiparticles must exist, okay? He'll try all kinds of song and dance. But there was no escape. And it's an interesting thought of drama, maybe just to remind you, that this will go on for years in spite of these particles being seen already in the 20s in Russia by Skobelsin. And the graduate student at Caltech, Chow, was screaming in 29 that he was seeing positrons in cosmic rays. It was heard by a fellow called Anderson. He got a Nobel Prize a year later after Dirac says it. He'll find the positron. Some time will pass before the antiproton is found, but anyway, we will grow up with the, some of us, surely my generation, with the dogma that for every particle, for every fermion, there is a different and that particle, a different fermion. It's a great thing, right? It came out of nowhere. It was really a bombshell. Except, says Myrana, may not be true. He actually thought of a neutron, but in any case, if you have a neutral particle, in principle, it can be its own antiparticle. Neutron cannot be that. We know today. And that, of course, means that you are going to violate whatever quantum number is associated with that particle. And here, this is sort of a, an electron number, right? A lepton number. And I'll create electron out of nothing will be realized by Raka immediately after Myrana. And the example is the indirect process. Neutrino is double beta decay textbook, as all of us know it. And what I want to talk about here mostly, okay, it's going to be some five decades before we came up with the possibility that the same thing can be observed at colliders. With the advantage that you can see that directly. You see colliders at LXC, okay that you could see directly that what you dreamt is not just to see lepton number violation, but you actually see the Majorana nature of a particle here. It will be only indirect. Whereas Collider could find the culprit, could find the physics which is behind it. And to the best of my knowledge, this is the only way to see directly the Majorana nature of a particle. Okay? And the rest of the talk is going to be the, the connection between these two. You see, I'm going to argue that there is a deep connection between the low energy processes. I'll also talk about lepton flavor violation, but here... It's these two, and then, of course, mostly about LHC. This is the work I've done with my collaborator, Kyung, and Brookhaven some years ago. Now, another arguably great bombshell of particle physics is the parity violation of weak interactions, and I'm not going to dwell on the history that you all know very well. What I want to remind you, because I think most of you may not know, I find out that most people do not know, that actually the fathers of Li and Yang, the fathers of parity breakdown, Actually, they couldn't believe that it's going to be like that. They said fundamentally, deep down, nature's got to be left right symmetric. Okay? What they imagined is another proton, another neutron. We would have different chiralities, we would say today. If you wish, in the modern language of particle physics, okay, or the standard model, this would be mirror fermions, the three families, just like ordinary, standard families, which would have opposite chiralities. They would be right handed when they couple to the W boson. I've been interested in this stuff for a long time. This is not a place, this is not a time. This is a great place to talk about it, but not the time. But what I've found remarkable, okay, in the last year or so, that this is still a logical possibility, although it's slowing disappearing. It's a great physics. It's a, it's a real physics. By the end of the year, they may be ruled out, but not yet. Anyway, I want you to remember the Li Yang dream, let's call it, that the world ought to be left or right symmetric. Now, my RANA program in this great sim simplicity, right? It's sort of the, the simplicity is so profound. All he says that I can write neutrino, say any neutral particle like neutrino, as a real field, right? Which means I can build it up out of a while fermion, or equivalently, I can write a mass term, which is only involving a while fermion. And that's obviously breaking a fermionic line. It's sort of creating or 
destroying neutrinos, and that means you will get delta L equal to lepton number violation, and being forbidden by the standard model symmetry because neutrino is a gauge particle, this is, of course, the reason that it's a window to new physics. When do you get neutrinos double beta decay? Well, sometimes you can't get a beta decay because the daughter nucleus may be heavier, like arsenic be heavier than germanium. Then you get a double beta decay. And by the fact that neutrino may have a Majorana mass, you close this, and through the Majorana mass of neutrino, obviously you can produce this violation of the lepton number. It's going to be proportional neutrino mass. And this is why the upper limit on its lifetime sets roughly the limit of about one electron volt. I'll be a little more precise later um, in a second. And we can then talk of the amplitude for the process simply as the value of neutrino mass, which is in precisely the EE element, if you wish, of the neutrino mass matrix, okay? When you include the values of the parameters that we know today, the masses and mixings, you see here you see some bands. This is the amplitude measure in the electron neutrino mass as a function of the only scale we don't know, right? The, the scale of neutrino, the overall scale here expressed as the lightest neutrino mass. You see the bands because we don't know still the phases and the free, little freedom in the mixing, in the theta-1-3 mixing angle. Not so important. What you see here, what the message is, that it's very much hierarchy dependent. It's what it is. The numbers are there. The interesting thing that cosmology is sitting in, you see, cosmology says that the sum of the neutrino masses has to be bounded from above. And that's sort of slowly eliminating what was giving a great hope to see this process when neutrinos are degenerate. And maybe it's worth mentioning what would probably be treated as a bound, the Heidelberg Moscow, the best experiment up to now that was running for 10 years and finished in 2000, has also been acclaimed in the last decade by Klubdor. So if you were to take it seriously, the number would be there. The reason I'm mentioning it, it's just because it is there. In any case, this is an extremely healthy field. There are a number of experiments going one after another, Gerda, Quart, and Majorana we are talking about. Uh, the great thing here that we are talking about the time scale that corresponds to LHC and the complementarity of this low energy and high energy physics, I will try to argue, is expressed also by the fact that we live in this great era. You don't care about this. All you have to know that there is an experiment already going on. Gerda started. It's going to do much better than Heidelberg Moscow in a few years. It may come to a to the claim of Klavdor, and then it's going to eventually do better. The essential point is the following. If it is to confirm the claim, or it is, if it is to see the phenomenon, okay, the new physics may be necessary because of cosmology. And I think it's wanted to mention it because this was emphasized already more than 50 years ago by Fang and Goldhaber, one of the pioneers of lepton and barrier number violation, who just passed away this spring after a great life. He lived up to 100 years. Uh, and the reason that, that, that oh, maybe new physics may be necessary, you've seen what is important that this new physics is going to be at low energies, you see, because the process, this process is highly suppressed. You see it in the small neutrino mass. It's a high dimension process, if you wish. So it depends as the fifth power of the scale of new physics that will produce it. And it tells you that if it is to be there, it's going to be a TV, okay? And the reason I'm emphasizing here, because it is often claimed that neutrinos double eta decay is a probe of neutrino mass. It's simply not true. But the core in the 60s was stressing this point also. So now what, what we should do in order that I continue, I have to say what the theory can tell us about neutrino mass. And once again, in the standard model, neutrino is massless because being a gauge particle is forbidden to have a Majorana mass term. Maybe only left-handed neutrino. And this, to me, from the very beginning, was tied to the fundamental question of Lee and Young, why is left right symmetry parity broken that you are not allowed to ask in the standard model, okay? They simply say it's broken, don't ask. Now, I for once can accept that God may be left handed, if you allow me to say this, but not that she is a cripple. So, how would you do the world left right symmetric if you don't want to repeat the families, okay, which probably be excluded by the end of the year? It's much simpler in the early 70s, this was realized that this dream 
they couldn't do this, Li and Yang, because there was no W boson at that time. So they didn't even have the language to tell us, so all you have to do is to do it, as Nike says. Just make it left right symmetric, okay? At the expense of introducing a right-hand neutrino, that immediately says there's going to be a set of new set of gauge bosons, charge and neutral. They, of course, have to be heavier than the left-handed gauge boson. And if you reach sufficiently high energy, you will see this exciting thing, the essential point for us that I'm forced to the existence of right-handed neutrino. Okay, I can't help it. And if, in a, in, a, in a precise language, I have to then make the gauge group left right symmetric, everything is left right symmetric, the charge formula has to be left right symmetric, and here is the first, you can see beautiful aspect of the theory, what used to be the ugly hypercharge you struggled to remember, is traded because of left and right being there symmetrically for B minus L, right, D sort of global symmetry being anomaly free of the standard model. And the particular law is played by the right hand in neutrinos, they give you left right symmetry and they cancel the uh, otherwise new gauge B minus. Many anomaly, the theory had a curse in the beginning. People gave us a hard time because neutrino was massive and naively you could expect it sort of to give a mass of the electron. It lives together with the electron. It's not that rigorous, okay? I won't go in details. It was not easy, however, if neutrino is a Dirac particle to make it light. Some of us tried, for example, Gustavo Branco and myself, it, it became ugly. And what is nice that this curse will turn into a blessing with the so-called emergence of the seesaw mechanism, the name we didn't invent. It's the fact that you can have a particular symmetry breaking of the theory that allows you the right-handed neutrino mass to be proportional to the WR. Okay, this trivial fact, it's interesting, just because my run idea was completely forgotten. My runner spinners were this mathematical object in supersymmetry and disappeared for a while from physics. And then, of course, through the usual Yukawa Dirac couplings, Dirac masses, you get the textbook by now formula for the seesaw mechanism. Neutrino, you would argue, is light because right-handed neutrino is heavy. I don't care so much about explaining why neutrino is light. To me, it's more connecting neutrino mass to new physics. You see, we are trying to relate neutrino mass to the amount of parity violation in H or parity restoration, if you want. So the rest of the talk, I'll always try to do that, try to find phenomena that probe the, uh, this. Now, in the minimal order, the reason that some of us, like myself, for quite a while didn't work with that, okay? By the way, I should say, you know, it's sort of <laughs> a great pleasure to speak today that all the fathers of this in the left right model, both Rabi and Peter, are here, okay? Uh, so, if you have some trouble, you can also jump in there. Now, in the minimal model, and we should look at the minimal model in order to have a predictive theory, otherwise there is very little that we can say. There was a limit which kept oscillating over the years. This is now some 30 years. We'll be looking at that study with a classic paper by Bell, Bender, and so on. It required WR to be heavy, mostly because of K-long, K-short mass difference and other rare processes, okay. And after some work, the number is settling there, okay, you've been changing. And therefore, you couldn't really hope Okay, you had to wait for LHC, right? There was no reason to be excited about the theory. It was not something to be tested from logically. Normally, I'll be telling you a lot about this limit because it will be very important, but the most exciting aspect of what is happening at LHC is the fact that here you will see experiment is already catching up with just beginning of the running. So if there is left, there is right, so presumably I will have also a right-handed contribution to the neutrino with double beta decay. This is what Rabi and I realized almost from the outside. It was in our longer CISO paper. And again, you can see just by putting the numbers here in the case of left contribution, the amplitude is small because the neutrino is light. Here, because WR is heavy, but the corresponding values happen in the TV region, which you expected on the generic grounds, right? We said that the new physics had to set there, okay? This is what is interesting, that here we have a phenological reason that the new physics ought to be at, this, at the LHC energy. So what's the connection with LHC? Well, rotation in a plane. It's as simple as that. We rotate the diagrams a few times, and what were proton and neutron now are the quarks which are producing your WR, and the same diagram now gives you lepton number violation at colliders, okay? As you can see that, here the quarks became jets. 
Now, this has a number of important profound regions. Well, first, by measuring the peak, by finding the WR mass, you would sort of be probing parity restoration. You could observe directly lepton number violation, right? You are seeing electrons or same size lepton plus jets. You can do more than that, and this is important for the neutrino physics, okay? This is why the torque should fit with the conference that is going on. You can actually study lepton flare violation. You can probe the flavor structure by looking into different final states here. And I personally, what I find also exciting, that this would be, once again, I'll say, the only way I know of to probe directly on my run in nature, because what is happening, once you produce a right-handed neutrino shell, being a sort of hybrid particle and doesn't know whether it's a particle or antiparticle, it will decay precisely half time into a lepton, half time into anti-lepton. So you would see that. It wouldn't be an indirect consequence of my Rana telling you what is going on, okay? You could actually see it. And this is how it looks like. You see the, there is this gift of lepton number violation. There is no background, as you can see. Red is the background, okay? This is a courtesy of my collaborator, Nesty, who provided this picture thing. You see how it's going down, and eventually at high energy it disappears completely. So these are the WR masses that you would hope to see at, say, 10 inverse factor, and this is a 14 TeV thing. And this is why it was concluded by more serious studies, okay, this people associated with CMS, Gnilenko et al., some years ago that you can go to 4 TeV easily with 30 inverse septum bar, or if you go to the very end and dream of 300 inverse septum bar and go to masses even of 6 TeV, it's not so important to speak of this expectation because The, the, the drama is sort of evolving in real time, and it's great fun to do physics again, the, the way we imagine we wanted to do it in the 70s. This is, for example, the situation in, the, in January when we looked up at this, try to put the limit with my collaborators that you see here, Nemesha, Knexty, and Zhang, and they will see in the large portion of the right handed neutrino masses in the hundreds of GeV relevant for the CISO mechanism and 95% confidence you'll be around 1,400 GeV at very early data, okay? This is the last year data, okay? This is electron channel, this is muon channel, almost no, no difference. The estimate we made that maybe at when you reach one in with Swepto barn, with, you could be closing up on the theory and our CMS colleague at Elegas, they are more or less getting there and this is what apparently is happening, okay? If you look here only a few months later, okay? Well, it's shown now, but this must be in April data or maybe earlier, with only 200 inverse Fepton bar, the limit already is going to about 1,600, 1,700. Let, let, if you want to see it a little better on the logarithmic plot, there is still a portion of small neutrino masses. After all, you could, not, you could, you could argue that maybe you don't accept the CISO mechanism. For example, if neutrinos were really right-handed neutrinos, so light that you just see missing energy, Okay, there is a CMS has set up a limit there also. If they are a little heavier, there will be displaced vertex. So there are ways of probing this, okay, even in the, uh, then there is a little region which is almost disappearing because the limit is growing where you would be a little more complicated. Doesn't matter, all I want here is to summarize how great this era we live in is happening. You see how in a matter of few months, the limits are growing, okay? And experiment is finally catching up with theory, and by the end of the year, we could be there, okay, if the things continue going as, as great as they do. Now, if I wanna, okay, now I have to be a little technical, I gave you the, the, the if you wish, the, 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 the basic physics, okay, the, the phenomena that will take place. If I wanna study the nitty gritty flavor structure, I have to tell you a little bit more about the model. Okay, I need to break the original gauge group. This is done with a triplet. Who provides the mass both to the new gauge bosons, charged and neutral, and the right-handed neutrino? This is how the CISO mechanism works. Then, of course, there is a Higgs doublet. It is hidden in a sort of bi-doublet, which only means that there is another Higgs, but it's heavy. It's practically relevant, for, even for LHC. Gives us electroweak symmetry breaking. What was noticed by Mohapatra and myself that also the left-handed triplet, which is necessarily present, will get a little mass and directly get a little wave, I'm sorry, 
necessarily and directly give MS to left-handed neutrino. So there is even a language here associated with this possibility that the Yukawa couplings are smaller than you would imagine, and then we call it type 2C. So the reason I'm mentioning you will see in the moment. Because what is it that we want to do now? This is the part which is relevant for neutrino physics, right? What I would want to do at LAC, we go, anything I tell you here today makes sense only if we are going to see this at LAC, is you want to, by looking at different flavors, probe not just the masses, as I argued before, by looking at the energies, momentum, final states, but probe the mixing, right-handed mixings. Now, um, I guess if you have wisdom and, and patience, you just wait for LAC data in the years to come. This is probably going to be 14 TV. We had neither. So we decided to illustrate how this would actually work. So in order to illustrate it, we took a particular example, okay? This is what I call type 2C. So only because in that case, I can say nicely what the right-handed mixing would be. So it's just, it's not that I'm advocating a particular parameter space. I want to tell you that if this is to take place, and it's not assuming too much. We still have a long way to go to probe the left-handed mixing matrix, as you know. We're just about probing the third missing. And here we are only assuming the, this particular relation. Just to show you, because this was important in my motivation, that I could do the same thing for neutrinos double beta decay as we did for the standard model. And these become small bands. Now, of course, inverse got traded for normal hierarchy because you go to one over the mass. If you sum the two, you wouldn't even have the vanishing possibility when there are cancellations, okay? And you could make the case for this process. Okay, this is an illustration. I won't talk about here. I could do similar thing for lepton flavor violation. In the theories, we have interesting lepton flavor violating processes through the, for example, doubly charged particle in a triplet. I'll be talking about it later in a little moment. Moment. The point is you could do similar study here. This is going to be discussed by an MF check on Saturday. So I hope that, that you will be there. But this is to illustrate you to see how the LHC could actually probe the parameters of the neutrino mass matrix and tell you, make predictions for low energy processes. Okay. I, I hope, I've tried here. I mean, this portion of the talk, I wanted to convince you that we have D theory, okay, which I want you to remember forced us to have neutrino mass long before it was seen, okay? The curse, they would turn into a blessing. And the theory that in principle can be observed and hopefully will be. But you may not accept that, so I want to go back to basics, okay, in the rest of my talk. And let's see. Um, here I just want to offer a particularly, probably a, a, a Personal issue that disagrees with most people, I'm sure, and it may provoke the discussion, okay? Because the fundamental issues in neutrino is it is often said that neutrino being much lighter than electron is a problem. I would say not a priori. After all, it's technically natural, and we have light fermions all around because you get more symmetry, color, or lepton number, or both symmetries when its mass is small. It is often said that this is a miracle that lepton mixing is large and quark being small. That this is also a problem. It's, it's, it's often called like that, not a priori, I would ask you. Quark-lepton symmetry, after all, is badly broken. There will be no reason, in my opinion, to expect them to be similar. Okay, I'm only saying this to emphasize that, to me, the issue, and this is what I want to focus, is relating the neutrino mass mixing to the observable new physics. Not so much telling you what they are and why they are, but try to find new phenomena that would result from this fact. So if I want to discuss this generically, okay, the best way, of course, to look at the effective theory or effective operator approach that was pioneered by Weinberg in the late 70s, I don't want to just talk about neutrino mass here because there are two operators that stood out. If I look back, in my opinion, on, on the last 30 years of physics beyond the standard model, when it was not naturalist, the search for the new physics was basically, most of the time, deep new physics looking for these two operators, okay? The measured five operator, this is neutrino mass, right? This is the doublet of leptons, the Higgs doublet, 
it has to be of dimension five for gauge reasons, okay. Weinberg writes similarly generically, of course, the obvious proton decay operator that has dimension six. Now, what they have in common, and this has often argued to be a very important fact, is that if the couplings were to be large, effective couplings of order one, the, 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 the proton scale would have to be very large, whereas the neutrino scale could be large. So therefore, it is obvious and natural there could be one and the same source, one and the same origin for these two large masses, okay? And this, of course, could be grand unification because it is suggestive that these two scales being so close, the neutrino scale to the grand unified scale, obviously, would be the right direction to follow. And so 10 theory particularly, is, it's really tailor-made for that. And I just want to mentioned to an interesting thing that comes out. And that's why I believe that these so-called miracles may not be miracles. That if you take a minimal supersymmetric SO10 and you don't do anything to it, you don't assume any discrete symmetry, you don't postulate anything more than that, you actually find out that you want to get a large atmospheric mixing angle together with a small quark mixing angle that we realized some years ago with Bites and Visani, which immediately prompting a lot of work, but mostly by Rabi, who is here, and his students, who showed that theta 1, 3 would then emerge to be right. I think you have a number like 9 degrees in your paper, Rabi. About 10 degrees, which I can resist mentioning, you know, would fit nicely with it, okay. But there'd be no LHC physics, or not LHC physics related to neutrino mass. And the fact that we have to wait at least 20 or 30 years for proton decay left me with a, I've spent many years working on this, left me with a sort of bitter taste in my mouth. And I would rather argue that there is no reason. This is often argued that actually when I hear people of summarizing physics beyond the standard model for LAC, neutrino physics is almost never mentioned. I find it mind boggling. The only physics that exists beyond the standard model. The reason it's done is because it's argued these coefficients naturally should be of order one, therefore the scale should be large. Well, I just want to remind you, okay, that if I look at the Fermi theory and I expect the new physics to settle at 300 GeV, it's actually settled a little earlier, right, because the G coupling constant is what it is. If it were smaller, it could settle even lower, okay. So scales can be smaller than what we naively imagine. And I think even more dramatic is the example of gravity, where the scale, the generic scale is 10 to the 90 GeV, can be even brought down to, to TV as argued by ADD as long as this coefficient. In other words, fundamental scale where the drama of strong gravity is taking place would be at the TV scale if this coefficient were small, it would be naturally small if there were large extra dimensions, for example. And this actually is following by a large number of people. So here we are saying that even 10 to the 19 GV can be brought down, obviously in neutrino scale, could be much smaller by the same grounds. And if you're really hung up on the hierarchy problem, then I would argue lower scale, less of the hierarchy problem. So this is what Weinberg operator tells you. If I look for the UV completion, well, I do, I mean, it looks silly what I'm doing because I think this operator in three different ways. And the reason I'm doing that is because they seem to have different structures. For example, this one, as you epsilon is anti-symmetric tensor, right, just to make this gauge invariant, this shows you that if I were to complete it, I would have to exchange a singlet fermion, right? This looks like a fermion, obviously. And this happens in the so-called type 1 CISO or the CISO mechanism, the original one. And here, another way of writing it, okay, it's just the fear thing gives you the same result, would look like a scalar triplet, a product of two, or here even more clear, a scalar triplet. And actually, it does happen. That's called type 2C. So. so you can see already from the form of the operator. And then, of course, if I had a singlet here, fermionic singlet, I'm going to have a triplet because doublet times doublet gives me a triplet. Also, this is a fermion. This is, you can see a fermion. That's called type 3C. So now, it also tells you that unless you have a theory of these particles or unless you can reach them, then, of course, it's just a language. And probably not such a good language. You are better off to use Weinberg's language because they all give you one of the same physics. Just as the, you used Fermi language for decades before we had the theory of the standard model or before we could reach the energies. So let's see what CISO is and how it will be probed at, at LAC. Now let's go to these generic scenarios. Type 1 CISO, 
if it's a heavy particle and you integrate out, I mean, here it is, right? I'm exchanging a singlet fermion. I don't know its mass. I don't know its coupling. You see, I'm sort of here defining the beauty of the standard model where I avoid all the interesting constraints because this is a particle which feels no gauge interaction. So it will be kind of phantom particle if it's heavy. Well, this sterile neutrino could be a remnant of the right. We saw that. The other thing which I find sad in this is that it will be hard, if possible at all, to produce a collider. These Yukawa couplings ought to be small. Okay, we'll see the limits. It's kind of crying for WR. But just to understand, I mean, but I have to, I'm going to discuss it actually. And as much as it breaks my heart, I sometimes work on this because it's become the main language, the main way that we look and understanding of neutrino mass. But what we do here, you see, we had a theory that gave us understanding of parity violations. It gave us gauge structure and new currents, lepton number violation colliders, possibility to probe my run and nature of these new particles, gave us CISO through the right hand neutrino. They say, I don't care, you say. I, 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 who cares about parity violation, new physics, new structure, neutrino? Just give me my right hand neutrino and I'll do that. Well, we can do that, I'm, and we do that. I'll, but I want you to appreciate. What, what it means. Suppose I'm to give a talk here on grand unification and of course, uh, you were to give a talk on grand unification and you would be all excited about unification of forces, charge quantization, prediction of magnetic monopoles, fermion mass relations, proton decays for the X bonds. You say, no, I don't care. If you tell me that there is proton decay, I forget all of this because the minimal theory is just adding this particle to the standard model. It's possible. I want to make it more dramatic. I take the standard model, and you all know what the standard model gave us, right? But you say, if you saw neutral currents, I don't want any of that. I don't care that Glesho predicted neutral currents and all of that. Just I'll take an arbitrary Z boson with arbitrary couplings and study. That's what we do. But there is something to it. First, there is something to it. One particular approach that the only one I feel really positive about. I'll mention in a moment. First, I want to remind you in the standard model that this particle can be as light as you wish. There is no constraint on it. There is no gauge structure. So it's not that it gives you a CISO mechanism. It may be massless. You'll get a direct neutrino. And, and since mass is arbitrary, I just want to tell you there'll be, there'll, be, there'll be limits. These are the mixings with the electron of the right hand neutrino coming from various low energy processes. OK, uh, K on decay, pi on decay, and so on. Here's the neutrino's double beta decay, which gives you a very good limit. The bands of uncertainties. There is an irony. This particle could be there, you know, conspiracy theory, to actually give you neutrino as double beta decay and nothing else, and you never see it. Like this it may have been discussed by Barra. I, I, I missed his talk today. Sorry. And this is from the paper that will appear tomorrow that we put up. W what I like, what was done, okay, by Asaka, Blanchett, and Shaposhnikov, and followed up by a number of papers, okay, to say, at least let me take this seriously and try to construct a phonologic and minimal theory that gives me the physics and cosmology that presumably took place like biogenesis and dark matter. And remarkably enough, you can do that. And by the way, you can do it still within the CISO mechanism. They assume that. The right hand neutrinos are really light. Below 1 GeV, the heaviest, I think, is here, and they go all the way to KV. As long as Dirac mass is small, you can still have a so called CISO mechanism. So, although I, you can see it hurts me, I think it's, it's a fair direction to follow. It's a sort of minimality approach. It doesn't give you LAC physics. We have to now complete the, the study, right? I go to the so-called type 2C. So we said that there was a triplet that I exchanged, right? The triplet will be directly coupled to neutrinos. And then it gets a wave because it can't avoid it, even if it's heavy, because being coupled to the Higgs scalar, it gets a wave, OK? This is the triplet that I showed you in the left-right theory. Now you can see in detail, OK? This is the matrix that was before. And the interesting thing is that there is a doubly charged particle, OK? The triplet wave is controlled to be small even if it's light, because there is a parameter that is self-renormalizable. Now, it could be a remnant of left right symmetry. OK, this is what Rabbi and I argue. This is the more natural possibility, I would, I, I would think, OK. Maybe not. OK, and we said what, what is exciting about these doubly charged particles. You see, they give a spectacular signature of pairwise 
same size, here you have same size leptons, okay? So overall, if you produce them pairwise, you would have lepton number conservation, you would see these separate pairs. And since the couplings, Yukawa couplings, give you the neutrino mass matrix, you will be directly studying neutrino masses and mixing. And you may say something in favor of this scenario, I would call it, I wouldn't call it a model, just sending a particle, that he has this predictivity that if for some reason that would be true. You see, don't look at it, this is very complicated. I just give you, this is from Garoya, Schwetz paper, these are people that looked into this more carefully, just to show you, for example, in the branch -E ratio, EE branch -E ratio, they'll show you the hierarchy dependence. This is normal, this is inverse. It's kind of interesting that you could, you see, probe directly the neutrino parameters at the, at the collider. Here you can see, you see the, the thick line is the, what is it, theta 130, the dashed line is, is going to larger values, right? Seven, eight, nine degrees, I'm not sure. You see, you would see the difference. You could probe even theta one three mixing angle, okay, and other things, okay? There is a decided study that they offered. Uh, but still you can ask, why in the world would you be left with such a particle? And I, the only sort of defense I could think about that Maybe what looked like the minimality choice when, when Weinberg takes the Higgs to be a doublet. Weinberg takes the Higgs to be a doublet, Weinberg is Salam, because that will give you the Yukawa couplings. There could be a principle, that it's, it's not minimality, but that actually the Higgses will be those that have Yukawa couplings. There will be a whole plethora of such particles. But then there is only one other which could have a web. Okay. And this is this one. So it's sort of interesting. It's not that you have a plethora of these possibilities. It's the only one you could have. And this could be justification for this miracle. If there are no CMS, I will be summarizing the limits coming from a recent D0 paper. They are becoming obsolete. Look what is happening, OK? I think this is really a drama evolving. In a month of three months, the limit has doubled. There are still some assumptions that go in this limit, okay? There, there are little loopholes that I could discuss with the experts, okay? We are working on that. But it's remarkable what is going on. July, April, around 300 GeV, okay? So just to emphasize you how much all of this is actually LAC physics. Finally, there was this third type C. So I would never talk about honestly about it, if not for possible grand unified origin, then I'll have to say something about it. Because adding sort of number of triplets to the standard model is not so appealing, where the right hand neutrino at least was giving a quark lepton symmetry. And this type 2 C, so maybe was completing a Higgs structure. It seemed a little ad hoc. Um, it's a logical possibility. What I find interesting is that it emerges sort of nicely in a, in a minimal or simplest extension of the, of the, of the celebrated Georgia Glacier SU5, minimal SU5 theory, which was our laboratory for, for a long time to understand grand unification, that to many people was ugly because it never unified matter. It had fine tuning. Those of you who hate fine tuning, obviously, the minimal model, you couldn't love it. But anyway, this philosophical, aesthetical, or whatever reasons are relevant, it doesn't unify. And neutrinos are massless as much as in the standard model, so the theory was ruled out. But still, if you are working in grand unification, and even if you work on SO10, as I did for a long time, you want to see what would be the minimal change. What would you have to do to somehow solve the, these two problems and relate them to each other? So at the expense of adding another representation of fermions, and I sort of <laughs> love to say that this really beautifully maintains the ugliness of the minimal model. Even more fine-tuning, as you will see, in asymmetric matter. But it maintains its predictivity. And, and these days, where, where we said five, oh, five after five, after five, we said, right? Ah, OK, sure. OK, so let me speed up then. Well, inside this representation, there is a triplet. There is also a singlet. So you would get a hybrid seesaw mechanism. And let me just show you how it would like, OK? This is maybe for the area and for the make it light. 
you see, if I look at the standard model or minimal SU5, this is a situation with the unification couplings. Anyway, this can remind you why it goes wrong, because often people tell you that proton lifetime is too short. Actually, the couplings don't unify. These are inverse couplings. This is U1 hitting SU2 too early, and SU2 and SU3 meeting there. This would be the minimal theory with these particles not being there. If you start moving them, for example, if you put a color act at lower, it helps you a little bit. Lower it, gets a little better. Still not good. You try. You have to move the triplet to be lighter. It still doesn't work. And if you keep moving the triplet, you see the situation keeps improving. When you come to about TV, you're just about right. This is the limit that you were set by proton decay. If you want to lower the scale below, the proton starts decaying too fast. So it's kind of interesting that the stability of the proton forces you to this particle to be very light. Okay? And, and you, you can actually see it because you say, well, I'm not convinced I'm going to be moving it up. And you see what happens that the scale, you can even try and get unification by moving the two of them together. The scale becomes dangerously low. And here it's sort of summarized by the two loop analysis done by Bites, Nemeshek, and myself, that basically being on the safe side, you better be below TeV. If you want to be below 10 to the 16, you would be really light, but you can push it somewhere there. So it's kind of interesting. This is the, the, the only case where I know where the theory actually predicts its own mass scale beyond the standard model. Not the whole scale, but at least one particle without any additional assumption. And uh, since there is not much time, I can be short because the physics is not so new. It's going to be the same lepton number violation, you're going to look at this, what is now becoming a paradigm of testing the Majorana nature of neutrinos, the CISO mechanism. You're going to again, again, looking for same size leptons. Again, this guy is just like a right-handed neutrino. You get more jets, but who cares? It just makes it a little harder to, to see the things. What is important that, once again, I want to stress, you probe neutrino parameters because the same couplings contribute to the case of these particles in neutrino mass matrix. The reach is a bit less because of the details of the theory. This is the, uh, maybe it's worth mentioning, although you would expect this not to be the case because of the prediction of only one, of, of only two massive neutrinos you find out that you almost completely determine the Yukawa couplings. In this case, it's not just like type 2. There is an extra complex parameter. This is the Barros 2 neutrinos, but whatever. Now, you may have not noticed, I think it was not hard, that I haven't mentioned supersymmetry here, right? And it's kind of strange, right? After all, supersymmetry, well, supersymmetry can mimic almost any phenomenon that you can imagine. It's surely going to mimic many of the phenomena I talked about. For example, the type 3 CISO that I've talked about, you can tell me, well, that's a Vino with our parity violation. I mean, it's all there in this rich theory, okay? So why didn't I talk about it? It's not that I don't think about it or I even didn't work about that. It's just that there are too many parameters. You see, what I wanted to establish to find the model theories, whatever, scenarios when you have this quantitative, not just the nice quality picture, link between low energy and high energy processes. So look, well, let me, let me come to that. So, so this is what I would have to add if I wanted to have R parity violation just to already a theory with 100 parameters, I would introduce another, there are like 27 here because of generation indices. So what I would have to do to make assumption about particle masses, I can give them a nice language like supergravity, but it's not that supergravity tells me what the particle masses are, not to me. I don't like that to make assumptions about particles that I should be looking at. I would rather wait to see whether LAC can tell us and find these particles and then maybe think about that. By the way, you could many of people actually put these couplings to zero. I don't know what precisely it means. I know that I get more symmetry, but also if they are small, I get this enlarged symmetry, almost. And then you can do supersymmetric CISO, but then you can imagine you have two sources of these phenomena. And in any case, it will be a subject of itself, supersymmetry with all its beauties and problems. So I can make you happy and finish. So LAC, what I wanted to argue, could probe the origin of neutrino mass. I 
I, I really hope I, I managed to convince you that can resolve the mystery of parity violation. This, you can see how personally, how much I care about it. But in any case, this is profoundly related to neutrino case. This was the reason they trev for the right-handed neutrino that gave us the CSO mechanism. You can directly observe lepton number violation. This is very important. Okay, this would complement the low energy searches when you only see the indirect thing. I mean, just to appreciate that, is if this is like not just seeing proton decay, which of course would be exciting, but then seeing the super heavy gauge bosons at the collider and knowing that they come from there. Okay, this is what, what LAC in principle and hopefully can give us. You can directly see the Majorana nature. I mean, sort of this Majorana dream. And I think in a neutrino conference, we must say that it's least, last but not least, you can measure the massive mixings I try to argue and provide this link with low energy experiments. Lepton flare relation, neutrino is double beta decay. LAC coming together. Thank you. Thank you for this very, very nice lecture and seminar. And let's take, we have five minutes for questions now and comments. Yes, in front of you, if you mind. You didn't mention the fact that you could see like sign dileptons from um, Majorana neutrino processes in heavy flavor decays, like Bs and Cs. I presume that's because you think the mass scale is a several TeV. It's a little, it's a little harder, or, or a little more than a little harder. Okay, that's the only reason I didn't talk on them. I focus on what is more sensitive, right? Neutrinos double beta decay, I think, is doing a better job. But maybe you, you, you can disagree with me. Uh, no, no, I have no, I have no clue. It's I mean, we another, looked. It seems to me the numbers don't go as well. But someone, I don't know if there is an expert who looked on this more carefully. The neutrino is a beta decay has, has done. Alain. This one. Yeah, I, I have a, I have a, 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 if you can bring back your LHC can Food. slide, which is the, I sh the last one. Um, the, yeah, LHC can do all this. The question is, um, how likely is it to do all this? You remember, I remember the, uh, the era, you know, when we were discussing naturalness in, in the 80s, and we started to debate how natural, what is natural? Is it going to be 7%? You know, it's like defining fine-tuning. I don't, are you asking me, I should have put maybe the odds. Are you asking me if I'm willing to bet on this? This is yeah. all I could say. I can't quantify it more than you. I try to give you the original motivation is that we may be forced to have new physics related to neutrino mass, yeah. then it is, it is very much at low energies. It's definitely less than about 7, 8 TeV, okay? And, and the range is being probed up to 6 TeV. I would say then it's very likely. I can bet money on that. We and, you and I can... Uh, I, li I like champagne rather, but... Uh, I, I think that would go whenever. very well with the paradigm of something when he showed in Latwil a few years ago that all the major big experiments were built to discover something and found something else. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be a good example. That would be a very good example if this was the case. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's a similar question you can ask for supersymmetry. Any theory beyond the standard model there is naturalness. But then again, I don't know. Here I wanted to argue I'd rather look for this one logical. Uh, I, I'm gambling here, of course. I mean, I have a hope that the cosmology will keep pushing down the sum of neutrino masses. We may be forced then to new physics. Then I would argue that this is a good bet. I had a, a otherwise, otherwise, it's really wishful thinking. I yeah, I had a small comment on the, on the, on the heavy flavor. The, the observation of, uh, of uh, a uh, lepton flavor violating process like that, um, fermion number violating process I using muons, for instance, would be fantastic because this would put a different constraint on the Majorana phases than the uh, neutrino is the bit that you can. Right. I wish I had the numbers of me. This was a good question asked. I know that it is, I, I, I think Bob Schrock used to talk about it a long time ago. Okay, there may have been other people. I know that it's less sensitive. I mean, Rabbi could know about that. I mean, this is the time we used to, we used to debate these things. I don't remember the numbers. I know the neutrino is double beta that is more sensitive. Okay, I, I, uh, 
If I may, the neutrino is double beta decay only couples to electrons, and if there's couplings to right. muons, not right. electrons. Right, so you could be probing other. No, it, it should be done. All the off. Sure. But yes. you see what I went for, what I've done. Let me just, sorry, say that then I went to the LAC because hoping that I will be measuring it there, okay? I mean, the talk was much more to emphasizing that LAC can do the same thing. But yes, it should be, it should be looked at. Uh, what will be the preferred value of the Higgs mass within this type of scenarios, or would we learn something from measuring the Higgs mass for this? Um, not easily. I mean, for example, in the... Uh, in the left-right symmetric theory, you see it reduces to the Higgs to the standard model. Therefore, the standard model Higgs follows its own own roadmap. In the case, for example, of type 2C, so there are some implications, but that will have to do with what these masses of the new particles are. We're just finishing a paper on the high precision study, which, interestingly enough, after all these years, is still missing. And for example, CMS seems to not to be taking into account all the constraints of the theory when they set the limit. And there, there may be implications, but only if I knew the masses of the doubly charged particles. You see, there will be, of course, any theory that has new particles nearby, okay? So that I could, I, I could show you if they are sufficiently light, then the Higgs may be forced to be heavier. So, for example, it wouldn't necessarily go well with the light Higgs, which, 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 which may be there. Peter had a question uh, for a while, I think we yes, can... Uh, let me allow a comment. rhetoric more question. Let's okay. assume time development of neutrino physics, as we know it now, including the hint for theta 1,3 and so on would have been known much before any plan of LHC was made. What would you see then as a logical possibility? What, what would you advise? Or is there any way of argumenting in this hypothesis? That's a sneaky question. Maybe for a panel. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I'm not sure I understood precisely what if. It's Tell me again, good sorry. Question, right? No, no, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, a good answer. So <laughs> no, the, <laughs> you have the question. To be answer is not good. Okay. I can tell you my All right. answer. One would well, why don't you? Why don't you do one that? Would not <laughs> plan a machine like LHC. If you knew earlier. That's what the discussion will be about. Yeah. Well, I mean, the LHC. What I'm after. Yeah. I'm in a neutrino conference. Therefore, probing, massing, and mixing. It's of course an important thing. But seeing a Majorana nature of a particle, seeing lepton number violation and colliders, think the thing, it's like seeing proton decay, but seeing it actually who is caused it, I would say to me, this is more exciting than any mixing in the world. I mean, I cannot believe that we have come to an era that is often said that today, if you want to measure proton lifetime, you have to hide with theta 1, 3 people, okay? In the old days, if you wanted to measure neutrino parameters, you have to hide with the proton decay experiments. I think we have gone too far. With all the due respect to that, I think this fundamental issue of the nature of the new particle and forces, I would have said this is the only thing, I if you ask me building an LHC machine when you cannot predict the scale, I think that's scary. That's not betting my own money, right? That's betting other people's money, but you can see that I believe in that, and you know, we have a bet. Yes. But, but as measurements are happening, they guide us into a richer program for what is already planned. I mean, this uh, is not the first time. I have a bit more practical question about the signatures that we can look for in LHC. Like one of the signatures that you were talking about, it's essentially the same flavor, uh, same sign, two leptons plus whatever, right? And we're already looking for this kind of signatures. We don't see anything with the femtobarn of data. So, like, do you really, like, is there anything, something else to look for? Or we already can say, like, okay, at one femtobarn of data, we don't see anything here. So, well, we can get whatever we will get extra with LHC. But basically, we are looking for this kind of things. I know. Yeah. Well, that. I was discussing that. I was actually, I, I know, I mean, we put a limit and CMS has, has, has put newer limits. Uh, if you remember, I've, I've gone through this so-called CISO scenario, CISO mechanism. You can see that I don't believe that uh, understanding or creating a new theory is just sending a particle to the standard model. We often call it a new model. To me, that is not a new model. I would call the left-right model being a model which has its own logic structure. And it took you by surprise to neutrino mass. They remember that the scale which I expect is above 2.5 TV. I don't, I don't think that, seven, that, that we, will, we, will, we will, at the very end maybe, okay, this was a 14 TV when we were putting this number a few years ago and doing it now, it's more like at 14 TV because I do believe in this limit. I, if I don't stick to the minimum theory, I can't tell you anything. And we are getting there. 
But also, if you relax these assumptions and you make cross-sections that are the 10 times lower, you, with one investment to burn, you don't have the sensitivity. So there is a lot of assumption going in there. Right. Oh, um, this is so not enough. We cannot really say that we have excluded uh, with one. <laughs> so we should be careful about phrasing. I, I was not no, saying no. that, but yeah. yes. I mean, the, the remember the, that, that the, uh, the uh, well, I don't know if I should show you, show you that. We are getting a little late. Um, anyway, I, I can just remind you. The early data, about 30 inverse, because one will, will give us a limit about 1.4 1 1 .4 TV. With one inverse septomer, it seems we are coming to 2.2 TV. So we are still below the, the theoretical limit. So therefore, uh, maybe at the, towards the end of the year, if you're really lucky to sit on that thing. Unlikely to see it. Last question, young lady. The microphone in front of you, please. It, just one question, because one of the most well, interesting things in the LHC is Higgs, okay? The looking for Higgs, Higgs couplings. And as the Yukawas can be big, can you not get some information from the Higgs couplings? I mean, quartic Higgs couplings or whatever. Not of much. Not much. The only thing that I could tell you in, in these so-called CISA scenarios, when I do have only one particle beyond the standard model, such as type 2, knowing the Higgs mass would help you do the high precision study with more constraints on these masses. Not that much. Mm -hmm. Nothing really. Uh, remember in the theory, like the left-right model, which is the theory of the new scale, the Higgs mass is practically irrelevant. Those particles lie at the TV scale. So the Higgs doesn't care, right? This is the beauty of the standard model. That it doesn't feel easily the physics that happens at 4 TV, the, the renormalizability. Mm. Well, the top is, is, is heavy on the Higgs field. Well, the know. top is not heavy in that sense. I must remind you, the top is the part of the standard model. Top has a large mass, but it's not a heavy, it's not a new scale. Top number is fairly large, but there is no standard model without the top. The new physics, when you have a new physics, new gauge structure beyond the standard model, which is sufficiently high energies, that has to decouple at low energies. No, not if it's SU2 cross V1 symmetry. I mean, the decoupling theorem only applies now when, when, there is, uh, when there is no Higgs. I mean, because when the couplings are not proportional to the mass. No? I think we can, well, take, no, this off, I think we can willing, take this offline. I'm willing you to can discuss the no, decoupling of gauge invariant scales, they must decouple. Gauge let's invariant scale. This is just like the cutoff. Let's thank Otherwise, there will be no standard model. Let's thank our Sorry. speaker again. Thank you. And uh, I will ask Professor Ellis for the handover of the roundtable. John. Okay, so I think we give people uh, a couple of minutes. Where are you going? Oh. <laughs> Some of them want to go. <laughs> It's a free country. <laughs> I should stay, she says. Yeah, okay. Do you mind if I uh, use your No, connection? yeah, sure. I don't need this anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Let me, let me turn this off. Yeah, supposed to you're, you're getting money from Alain Blondel. I'm not getting money from Alain Blondel. <laughs> not a penny. I hope I will. Uh, I mean, I may get money from it. But not, uh, uh, sorry. News.
motion to debate. Okay.